So you've just downloaded ExpressVPN and now you might be wondering how to use ExpressVPN. Well, don't worry, I'm here to help with this little tutorial. Uh, but real quick before we begin, if you're interested in a big and exclusive ExpressVPN discount, well, you're gonna find a link down below. And with it, you're really gonna get the lowest prices, including three months for free. Oh, and speaking of the pricing, I like that with just one subscription, you're gonna get a plan that has everything that they offer. Okay, no need to go into too many details about installation since it's a very straightforward, easy process. Just next, next, and done. <laughs> So let's start by looking at your daily use kind of stuff. And I'll even throw in some tips and tricks along the way. Also, quick note, I'm going to use the ExpressVPN Mac app and Windows versions during this tutorial, but most of this works on their other versions as well. All right, so I've got the desktop app open. Let's see how to use ExpressVPN. To start protecting my data, all I have to do is press this big button in the middle and that's it. I can click here to select a specific location or server. ExpressVPN did previously advertise that they have 3,000 global servers, but now I'm not so sure about that number because they've removed it from their site. Very strange indeed. Anyway, I can get access in over 90 countries covering four major regions, Asia Pacific, the Americas, Europe, and a few countries in the Middle East. Express has fewer servers than say NordVPN, but offers more countries to connect to. And that's a big plus for me since it gives you way more versatility in accessing specific streaming content. Oh, and when I don't need a specific server or area, I just use Smart Location. This feature automatically picks the VPN server that provides the optimal experience using metrics like download speed, latency, and distance. The app is straightforward and clear overall. I believe that even a complete beginner could understand what's going on here. And what I like about ExpressVPN is that no matter what device I use, the app design and overall structure pretty much stay the same. It lets me quickly switch devices without too much hassle. And ExpressVPN allows me to install it on an unlimited number of devices. But side note here, I can have up to five devices connected at the same time. But I do have one minor nitpick. See, I really like visual maps. So it's kind of a tiny bummer that ExpressVPN only comes with a server list. Eh, I like maps, what can I say? Okay, let's look at the extra menu here next. Sometimes a menu like this is called a hamburger menu. Unimportant information, but I'm just so, so hungry. <sighs> okay, anyway, the speed test feature is actually a bit confusing. It's supposed to show me the fastest server, AKA a basic speed test. So eh, let's go do that right now. Okay, my baseline for download speeds is 300 Mbps. So the test results, it's currently showing me around 261 for the fastest server in the US. And then a few other popular ones are showing around 250. To compare that to others out there, well, you're looking at a really good result. But other providers like NordVPN can and do show slightly better speeds. But don't get me wrong, this kind of speed is still perfect for general browsing and even some activities like reliably accessing streaming platforms. However, the Windows version doesn't have this available. Okay, maybe it just wasn't working correctly, I don't know, but it's still there on my ExpressVPN for MacBook version and seems to work fine, so I'm a bit confused. If it works, why not leave it in the Windows version? I guess since it's not all that useful, I don't know. Since in general, the rule of thumb is that servers closest to you physically are gonna be the fastest ones, depending on times and the actual loads of the servers. The internet travels fast, but still gotta cover those faraway distances. All right, if I go back to the hamburger, oh, hamburger menu, I can select options. First, the general tab. Okay, so for me, I always enable the start on Windows and the start minimize features. I can also activate auto connect to the last server feature. With the combo of all three features enabled, my PC is on a secure VPN connection nearly all the time, which is pretty convenient. All right, next up in my ExpressVPN tutorial, now don't get confused by the network lock feature. It's really just a kill switch with a fancy pantsy little name. All I need to do is activate it. And with it, it's gonna kill any connection to the internet if the VPN connection is interrupted. 
This helps to ensure that my IP is never exposed online, even in bad VPN connectivity situations. So not much to say about this since my experience of ExpressVPN, well, seems to work just fine. Oh, but I do like that network lock allows me to still use devices on the local network, like my printer. So even if the connection goes out, I can still connect. Okay, that's it for the general settings. Let's move on. The account tab is, well, my account information. Duh. However, an extra tip for my ExpressVPN tutorial, I can basically get a month of free ExpressVPN if I recommend it to a friend. You could save a lot of money if you have a lot of friends who need a good VPN and who sign up. All right, let's move on to protocol selection. Now for most users, I'm gonna recommend leaving this option on automatic or lightweight UDP since it's the fastest protocol, at least it is in my experience. Lightway is a custom design protocol for ExpressVPN meant to improve connectivity speeds and yeah, it is fast. But I did notice a few drops in different countries, but nothing major to write home about. I can also choose IKE v2 and OpenVPN protocols if I need something a little more specific. But quick note, IKE v2 protocol is only available for ExpressVPN iPhone and Mac versions. Okay, the next tab we have is shortcuts and it works like presets in NordVPN, but with a few differences. With NordVPN, I could create different settings for a specific thing like Japan servers for quick access to various streaming libraries over there. While ExpressVPN lets me add five URLs or apps to this helpful bar under any VPN server, allowing me to use these shortcuts to quickly launch specific things when the connection to, let's say Japan, is made. Okay, not a necessary or big deal feature, but it does let me customize this tool for my needs. And I love customization too. Next for this ExpressVPN guide, browsers. And here I can download Chrome or Firefox extensions. These extensions work as a desktop app supplement, meaning I can control the app through the extension. Makes things a little quicker. And not much to say about these extensions, mostly because I haven't encountered any issues with them, and also because they're extremely similar to the desktop app already. ExpressVPN also has a feature that blocks all tracking and other potentially malicious activity from third parties when browsing or using apps. All I needed to do is enable threat manager features and that's it. This feature works in real time and prevents my device from communicating with servers on the ExpressVPN block list of trackers and malicious sites. It's a great tool for that extra protection. However, threat protection isn't available on ExpressVPN for Android or Windows. So this feature is a bit of a mixed bag, I guess. But over in the advanced tab, I can also find IPv6 leak protection. This is on by default and well, it protects you from IPv6 data leakage. Since this is the newest IP version, not all VPNs are ready to handle it to hide your identity if you're using IPv6. Oh, and if you're going to get a premium subscription after this video, do not forget to save yourself some serious cash by using our exclusive discount links in the description. Okay, that's actually it for my how to use ExpressVPN video. As you witnessed, it's an easy to use VPN that offers extra browsing privacy. Okay, it may not be the most feature rich provider and can be a little more expensive, but it's fast lightweight protocol and extensive location selection make it one of the best VPN choices for beginners. Well, glad you stayed till the end. And for you, haha, I'll leave my precious Express VPN review on the screen for a lot more details and info. And if this video helped you out, well, uh, you should probably drop a like and subscribe, you know, just as a, a thank you. Anyway, have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.